Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the MDS Women in Movement Disorders Leadership Spotlight Series. Uh, in this series, we aim to interview influential women in movement disorders and to discuss their careers and achievements. Uh, my name is Iva Stankovic. I am a neurologist and a movement disorder specialist working in Belgrade in Serbia. Um, and for today's session, it is my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Samia Bensasi. Uh, Dr. Bensasi is Associate Professor of Neurology at the Monji Ben Hamida National Institute of Neurology, Faculty of Medicine, University uh, of Tunis, El Manar in Tunis. Uh, she completed her uh, medical training and the residency in neurology uh, at the University of Tunis. And later she had her fellowship at the uh, uh, in neurophysiology at the University Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris. Uh, she is a current officer of the African section of the Movement Disorders Society, also a member of uh, the MDS uh, African Education Committee and of the International Brain Research Organization African Regional Executive Committee. So Dr. Ben Sassi, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed today and thank you for your time. Uh, first, I would like uh, to ask you to briefly uh, introduce yourself uh, a bit more and tell us about your main uh, areas of work. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, Dr. Stankovic, for this uh, kind introduction. It's really a pleasure for me and honor to be with you uh, today. So I'm uh, mainly working on uh, neurogenetics, on uh, mainly on Parkinson's disease genetics at uh, the National Institute of Munji bin Hamida of Neurology. So this uh, institute is named after Munji bin Hamida, who, is a, who was an eminent neurologist. And uh, he worked a lot on the genetics of hereditary neurodegenerative disorders. So several um, genetic diseases have, have been prescribed for the first time by him and his team, uh, such as the um, kind of muscle dystrophy called or previously called uh, Tunisian muscle dystrophy, it's now, which is now called uh, lgm 2 c or R5, and uh, the ataxia with vitamin E deficiency and so on. So it's rather tradition to work on the, these uh, neurodegenerative diseases uh, in our institute. And uh, it's really uh, a teamwork. So we, we do a lot of field studies, clinical and genetic studies. So since I was a resident, I was involved in that. And um, um, so just maybe to to put you uh, in the picture, um, we've it's so usually we we go to um, we use uh, we perform field studies. So we we go in a four by four car to uh, remote rural areas to study um, high inbred populations because a high frequency of autosomal recessive diseases. So we go we we visit the families. We examine the patients and their relatives and we perform, uh, we take blood samples for DNA analysis. So um, we visited once a family with uh, ataxia and we needed to take uh, blood samples from the patient and also from both his parents who were healthy. And we could take a blood sample from the mother but the father was not at home. And luckily we had a very clever nurse with us and while driving back to the hospital, the nurse asked the driver to stop and pointed to a shepherd surrounded by his sheep, sitting on a hill surrounding uh, the sea. And he said, this man must be the father and he was healthy. And uh, in fact, he was the father and consented, consented to participate in the study. So taking a blood sample from a shepherd surrounded by a sheep was rather a surreal scene. So it's, it has been really exciting for me to be to be part of this research, both clinical and genetic, and not, not very traditional kind of uh, uh, of doing. And um, uh, it was a great opportunity to to be part of this uh, research. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank my mentors, my colleagues at this uh, national institute, and also to thank these patients and their families maybe some of them would be listening, for being very welcoming and very willing to help. Uh, thank you so much. This is really a nice story uh, that you shared with us. Uh, so um, 
first of all, um, I would like to ask you um, what uh, to walk us through the highlights of your career. So please uh, let us know how your journey began and uh, what were the major milestones and decision points in your career so far? Okay, so as you kindly mentioned, I studied medicine, studied medicine at the Faculty of Medicine of Tunis, and I completed my residency of neurology at the same faculty in Tunis, and I went to France for a fellowship in neurophysiology at the University Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris. I've also had a short training on GBS programming at the Neurological Hospital in Lyon in France. And the studying abroad was a really rewarding experience for me and helped me a lot to gain confidence. And then when I came back to Tunis, I had to pass several competitions to become assistant professor and then associate professor in neurology and more recently professor. And besides neurology, I've also studied statistical methods and epidemiology, as well as medical genetics and genomics at the Faculty of Medicine of Tunis. And currently, I'm an interim head of the neurology department at the Munji Ben Hamidan National Institute of Neurology. I've also, I'm also involved in MDS as an officer of MDS Africa, as a member of the Educational African Committee. And I'm also a member of Hebrew ARC Executive Committee. So uh, I, I'm, so since my residency, in fact, I'm working in the same institute and uh, on uh, these uh, hereditary neurodegenerative uh, disorders. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, do you have, uh, um, uh, what uh, uh, has been your experience as a woman and in navigating the path as a leader is this, in this field? So uh, did you have some challenges uh, or did being a woman help you in some way? Okay, to be frank, I've never felt discriminated as a woman. In Tunisia, in the medical profession overall, female doctors largely outnumber male doctors. So maybe 70% are females. And uh, in our institute, for instance, even to include residents, there is only one male neurologist among about more than 30 neurologists. So, and the strength is in numbers, isn't it? Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, however, what has been really challenging for me is uh, working in a developing country, with a country with limited resources. So, and here men and women are tarred with the same brush, let's say. But um, I think that we've been able so far to take care of the patients in a rather adequate way. And it has also been difficult to do research, especially in neurogenetics, because it's not really considered as a public health priority in uh, our country. And it's also very difficult to be trusted by editors and to be to get published. But um, thanks to international collaborations and for focusing on our particularities, we've managed to, de to do it so far. So I don't know if you're aware of the prevalence of a particular form of Parkinson disease called the PD in our country, in Tunisia. It's very, it's the highest frequency in the world. So maybe about 30 to 40 percent of all Parkinsonism, uh, Parkinson disease patients have the unique mutation, a found mutation. So because of this, we are doing a lot of work on it. So, uh, I hope uh, we'll find a cure specific cure for it uh, soon. Yeah, really nice. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what would be uh, your uh, biggest piece of advice for a woman pursuing a movement disorder career? So a uh, famous adage says that medicine is learned by the bedside and not in the classroom. And this is uh, particularly true for movement disorders. So it's very important to develop observation skills in this field, as well as the sense of synthesis. And whatever the challenges we would face as women or as being from developing countries, I think that we need to believe in ourselves and to maintain our enthusiasm in this very exciting field. Thank you. Uh, do you have uh, any tips for our listeners uh, uh, for maintaining uh, work-life balance? So I think it's very important to be well, well organized, to set priorities. And um, as medical doctors, we are usually obedient. I don't know if it's the case uh, everywhere with a sort of military discipline. So I think we need to learn to say no sometimes. 
Okay, yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so that would be my last question for today. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story. Uh, and also for your valuable inputs. Um, I believe that many women in MDS and also all the other listeners for sure uh, will find this interview inspiring and useful for shaping their own careers. So thank you so much. Thank you very much.